lot of how Western business has been done. There hasn't been a lot of integrity shown. It's basically, you know, first past the post, it's, yeah. everyone's competing with each other. And sometimes it's a bit of a dog eat dog thing. And where I am competitive, I, I am, I'm, I'm not cannibalistic. And so what we've actually found is, especially in New Zealand, um, as well, and, and, and Māori now around the world are having huge influence around how we're running businesses. And in actual fact, um, wahine preneurs or um, Māori um, leaders, business leaders, are, are now at the forefront um, globally of, um, I guess, being or championing uh, Indigenous businesses because of the way in which, I guess, we see the world. Welcome to Push To Be More with me, your host, Matt Edmondson. This is a show that talks about the stuff that makes life work. And to help us do just that, I am chatting with Heidi Renata from Innovate HQ about where she has had to push through, what she does to recharge her batteries and to be, as well as what more looks like for her. Now, the show notes and transcript from our conversation will be available on the website, pushtobemore.com. And also on our website, you can sign up for our newsletter. And each week, we will email you the links along with the notes, automatically they come through straight to your inbox, totally for free, which is amazing. So if you haven't done it yet, go to pushbemore.com and sign up for the newsletter. Now this episode is brought to you by Orion Media, which helps entrepreneurs and business leaders set up and run their own successful podcast. Well, why would you want to do that, you might ask? Well, let me tell you, it is a great marketing tool. Oh yes, it opens doors to amazing people like nothing else I have seen. I have built networks, made friends, and had a platform to champion my customers, my team, and my suppliers. And I think just about every entrepreneur or business leader should have their own podcast, simply because it's had such a huge impact on my own business. Now, of course, this sounds all great in theory, which I appreciate, but there's a whole lot of problems, isn't there, uh, with that simple statement, like, how do I know if I'm setting it up right? How do I know if I'm doing it right? What's the technology behind it? I mean, the list goes on. So, this is where Orion Media steps up to the plate. You see, I love talking to people but not all of that other stuff. So Orion Media does it. That's what they do. It's what they do brilliantly. We've got a great team who take care of everything. So if you wonder, if you're wondering rather, if podcasting is a good marketing strategy for your business, do connect with them at orionmedia.com. That's A-U-R-I-O-N media.com. We will of course link to them on the website as well, which one more time is pushtobemore.com. So let's meet today's guest, Heidi Renata, the co-founder and chief energy officer of Innovate HQ, which I just think is a great job title, the chief energy officer. We all need those. Uh, She is a popular motivational speaker whose career has spanned over two decades, uh, having spent 13 years at the forefront of technology in the ICT sector. She was recognized in 2015 as one of uh, Vodafone's New Zealand top business leaders. And in 2016, she co-founded Innovate HQ, the first indigenous modeled co-working space in the world. I really want to do that Jeremy Clarkson voice, you know, the in the world. (laughs) So, excuse me, she set that up uh, with culture at the heart of its business model and leadership strategy. Now, hide this story is best described as culturally curious, uh, which I I just love this, Uh, culturally curious. Uh, She is a culturally curious Wahaini entrepreneur, or Wahainipreneur, I think is the proper word. Now, this was inspired by her life's journey of self-discovery from being a Wahaini, uh, from blended heritage of Maori, Scottish, and Irish descent, inherently living dual lives, not always comfortable in one or the other, but unconsciously searching for the authentic 
Blend from a small town in New Zealand, working for her family's business to her rise within the corporate world, traveling the globe and being a business leader in a fast paced and competitive world. Resilience coupled with integ integrity and grace uh, was not only critical to survive, but thrive. This is the philosophy behind her teachings, program design and delivery, representing over 25 years industry experience, which she has made available to a global audience. Oh yes, this is a great conversation. Grab your notebooks, grab your pens. Here is my conversation with the incredible Heidi Renata. So Heidi, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Thank you for joining me. How are we doing today? Fantastic, thank you. And kia ora from New Zealand, Matt. Kia ora is hello and welcome in our Māori language. Um, yeah, it's 10.30 in the evening here, so it's a, it's a lovely <laughs> early start to my to my day, but no, thank you so much for inviting me on to share, I guess, a little bit of um, me on here. And so, yeah, appreciate it. No, it's great to have you. And I'm, I've been looking forward to the conversation, uh, really getting, getting into the conversation, which is great. So let me start, Heidi, with um, the question that I now like to ask all my guests, right, because it's just a great opening question. As you know, this show is sponsored by Orion Media, which specializes in helping Great people like yourself host their own podcast to, you know, meet interesting people and grow their business. And I'm kind of curious if you did have a podcast, right? Let's imagine you do and you could interview anybody from the past or the present that's had a big influence on your life. Who's who's on your guest list and why? You yeah, well, hundred percent. It would be Julie Andrews. Um, I guess she was potentially my first girl crush, if I'm being completely honest, <laughs> many years ago, but. Julie Andrews, the great Julie Andrews. Um, I've watched The Sound of Music, oh, I don't know, 30 times throughout my life. And I think... <laughs> wow, one of the that's a lot. <laughs> I know, a little bit obsessive, but anyhow. <laughs> um, but I think one of the things that I really admired and still admire about um, Julie is her, Julie Andrews is her grace mm -hmm. and how she'd stuck with her. You know, she's always been a very humble and graceful um woman and I could listen to her for hours. I think the problem I'd have if I did interview her, I'd probably get a bit starstruck and say nothing. So it would be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem like with the this whole... question. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think it would be one of those very silent, very unusual podcasts because I'd be, yeah, completely starstruck with her. But no, I've um I've admired and respected her throughout the years and, you know, even in her 80s now, early to mid 80s, you know, she's yeah. still as great or whatever. Um, and um, so she's been a huge influence, I think, just because she's 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 kind of got that sunshine personality. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think even in all of her roles that she's played and she's had a diverse career, um, you know, I'd always seen her as either the you know, the Maria from Sound of Music or the Mary yeah. Poppins, or I think she's had extreme <clears throat> roles so. Yeah, no, I think she is a really graceful and very influential um, woman, or wahine, yeah. Oh, wahine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the, um, and wahine, just to clarify, is the Maori term, because we were talking about it, so is the Maori term for woman, right? Woman, yes, it is, yeah. And also in Hawaiian culture, wahine is the same. Wahine. Is there, um, I mean, we'll come back to Julie Andrews in a minute, but I'm kind of curious <laughs> now you've mentioned this. So it's it's the word for woman in Maori and also in Hawaiian. Is there a lot of crossover between Hawaiian and Maori culture? Yeah, yes, because we all sort of descended from yeah. Hawaii. I feel us Polynesians, Hawaiians, it was, I think, it's Maori, Tongans. Samoans. So there was a yeah. group that basically, as you probably have aware, migrated. And yeah, um, all, and it all come base, down in the rocker mm -hmm. many many thousands of years ago, and so yeah, there's different there's definitely a um, correlation in that to mm. a lot of the language that uh, we speak. So you will hear some of those intrinsically. Yeah, they're still sort of there. Yeah, it's a bit like I suppose the Latin languages, isn't it? Because you know I speak mm -hmm. English, the, my French cousins obviously speak French, and there are some, there are still some crossovers uh, in the Latin. Not a lot these days, it has to be said, but there are still some crossovers. So I'm always intrigued that these have remained intact for so long. Um, mm -hmm. but let's get back to Julie Andrews, right? Um, so you talked about Julie's grace and humility. My daughter would know Julie Andrews 
from the movie, um, uh, what was it, Princess Diaries uh, that oh, she you... did. Uh, she And so I had to watch the Princess Diaries with my daughter as she was growing up. And so I'm like, this is Julie Andrews from Mary Poppins. And it's just, it's really fascinating, isn't it, to see that she was, she reminds me a little bit of um, Dame Judi Dench. Do you know what I mean? That sort of, yeah. that era of um, actress and just, an amazing person that I, I can totally see why uh, you would want her on your podcast. So why, uh, why would you be drawn into somebody who, to use your words, has both grace and humility? What is it about those characteristics that you find so appealing? I think it's the authenticity that's demonstrated or, um, you know, when someone is graceful and, 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 and shows that humility, I mean, they feel genuine to me. And I think um, I don't suffer fools. So I, I guess one of the yeah. things that I find meaningful is when I'm building relationships, um, I like to know or, or I'm usually influenced by, by good people, you know, soulful people. Mm. And I think also with her, there's a cheekiness to Julie Andrews, which I like. So there's a gracefulness <laughs> and almost an innocence. And then there's this really playful... Um, you know, cheekiness to her as well. So I think there's a little, you get a bit of a, um, you, you know, a bit of double delight with her because, you know, when you think she's sort of innocent, then there'll be this wee place for, which is, which is great when you're sort of thinking of how you're going to do life. It's like you want to be meaningful and, and graceful and kind. Mm. Um, you want to still be playful as you're doing that. So yeah, that would probably be some of the things that I'm drawn to. Um, just the fact that she's got this authentic way about her. Um, yeah. and she can be, you know, she can be serious and fun and do those both very well. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because you definitely see the fun side when you watch Mary Poppins, right? I mean, you've <laughs> got to have something about you to be able to pull that movie off. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so this authenticity thing then, you know, the, the authenticity, the genuineness of people. Um, I mean, I totally get what you mean and I, I, I can, I can totally empathize with that is that something that you try and bring into what you guys do at say innovate H, uh, H innovate hq it's not innovate aid hq it's innovate hq let me get that right right yeah <laughs> and i'll give you a bit of history with the v8 because i like fast moving things so the inner mm -hmm. v8 hq is all about fast pace i guess innovation um yeah i mean i think for me um authenticity and and being genuine is a, is a big deal for me uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm sort of one of those people. I'm fairly spiritual, so I can see through. I can see through filters, I guess, or facades if people aren't being um, honest with me. So um, I'm drawn to people that offer, I guess, a more genuine approach. And I, and I guess also, when we look at running a business, we want to be trusted. We want to be a trusted brand. So if we're not mm -hmm. advocating a genuine part of ourselves, and we're going to struggle with being able to not only acquire but retain clients so yeah I think and and I um you know I sort of always sort of talk about authenticity doesn't you know can be about being able to share your vulnerabilities as well so a lot of the coaching and mentoring that we do is you know especially when we're working with our youth um is showing them our you know our authentic selves where we're going to tell them and I guess show them some of our vulnerabilities because I guess it breaks down a lot of these barriers and we can um and they'll trust us more. So, yeah, and th authenticity and being genuine is extremely important to me and making yeah. sure that I remain I remain that way in every way, shape or form, yep, not to compromise anything. Yeah, that's a really powerful thing, isn't it? It's such a – it's an interesting lesson that I think um, – and I don't know if you found this, Heidi, <clears throat> but for me, the older that I've got, the more important that lesson is. Oh, wow. um, Whereas I think when I was in my 20s and my 30s, I was trying to always trying to accomplish something, always trying to have success in something. Um, and there was a great book a friend of mine gave me the other day uh, where it talked about how when you're in your sort of 40s and 50s, you move from wanting to be successful into wanting to be something that's significant. And and for me, significance ties very much with these words like authenticity um, and so, I don't know, I, I'm curious, is it just me? I, have you found that as you've gone further on in life, it's become more and more of a bigger deal to you? 
Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, um, you know, I'm in my later forties now, and I think you've sort of you've you've done a lot of experimenting and rehearsals over your life. So you've you've weaned out the things that you're probably not going to tolerate for too much longer, and you and you, I guess um, you start honing or at least polishing the the, the direction that you want to take. So I think, and especially you know, you know, beyond the whole COVID um, stuff that we had, it's I've noticed a lot more people, um, given the fact that we had a lot of limits around what we mm. could do, it changed how people saw how they're living their lives. So, you know, whether it's personal or the professional stuff, you know, I've got a lot of colleagues now that have either, you know, compl- had a complete change in, in career path or they've decided to, you know, dump their business and do something else or mm. work less, have a better work life balance. Um, so I think, yeah, I think as we've, as we've, our age and stage changes how we um, how we see today and our futures, and then ultimately, I think we become more values aligned. So you know that whole thing for me is is always sort of having values <clears throat> at the centerpiece of who we are, and making sure that we always, um, I guess, stay on track with those, and we don't ever, um, I guess, compromise them. So mm. yeah, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. So what is your um... What is your journey then? I mean, you've you've got your company now. I know you guys had a little bit of a a struggle during COVID. And one of the things I, I put it down in my notes, um, Heidi, and I'm just going to read it here. That um, this is a great quote from when we did the prequel. So we always have a, if you don't know, dear listener, we always have this sort of chat before we record the podcast, just get to know each other a little bit. Um, And you were talking about COVID and how you had to transition out of the business that you were in into what you do now, which we'll get into. But this was my quote. It's bloody hard running a business. Um, Many people go into it romantically for the short run, uh, which I think is a very true statement. But you wanted to challenge the paradigms of Western business. And I'm really curious what you what you meant by that phrase to challenge the paradigms of Western business. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, no, 2020 taught us a lot of things. Um, again, when we set up Innovate HQ, we were set up as a shared workspace um, and an innovation hub. So, of course, come 2020, when everyone's been made to stay at home, it became very difficult to sustain um, a a business that actually supported other businesses actually cohabitating. Yeah. Um, so that was an interesting period, but it was also, you know, if I was also being honest about that stage as well, I was probably burnt out. So, you know, lots okay. of huge hours, um, you know, I was working, we opened in 2016 and we'd seen over 20,000 people through the space and I was predominantly always okay. on and available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, always on wow. and available. Yeah. So, um, and I think like most, I guess, ambitious entrepreneurs is we just want to keep going. So, you know, no such, we don't tend to worry too much about risk or burnout. We just keep going. But I guess when COVID sort of hit New Zealand, went on to full, full diet, full time lockdown, um, it was almost like that, um, it was almost like a little blessing of, well, I get to have a bit of a break. Um, and this is a really nice sort of period of time to sit and reflect. And then obviously what were we going to do with the business? If we were never going to come out of lockdown for a period of time, and we were also mm. right in the middle of our, our commercial lease, so it was almost like divine timing, you know, that sliding doors moment of going, right, um, we've got so many other wonderful um, services and products that we offer beyond the space. The space was the highest cost and the highest maintenance, um, and so it was a, an easy but not easy decision to make. Um, yeah to relinquish that part of it, but with all of our education and training programs, being able to um, expand on those and do what basically what I love the most instead of just mm. having to worry about being a landlord was really, yeah. was really critical. Yeah, so it was, you know, I guess that sliding door moment of being able to transition out and not everybody can do that. Yeah. Um, I think we were lucky because of the way we staged the business. I mean, in a lot of co-working spaces, they're just all about real estate. Ours was basically, I guess, the found, uh, you know, the base for where we did stuff. But yeah, really, what the purpose behind our business was: uh, education and training. 
So we were so lucky to be work in space was a place where you delivered, in effect, the training. Absolutely. Um, yep. And it's and you had twenty thousand people. That's a lot of people, especially in New Zealand. Uh, that's a lot of people come through your doors, um, and you delivered yep. the training. So when COVID hit, you were then able to pivot and just focus more on just on the training and say, well, we can deliver that. We just don't need this building to do it. Have I have I got that right? Yeah, absolutely. Which was brilliant because we become a more of a holistic organization, yeah. which means that we're we're lean. We don't have to worry too much about having to have a commercial space and worry about that. Um, we could just focus on what we, our, you know, what we were passionate mm-hmm. about was around, you know, um, the education and training on leadership and entrepreneurship. And so, um, yeah, no, that was that that was a scary, but actually a really exhilarating and kind of a very powerful um, um, moment and time to go through because you just. You just never know. And at that stage, you know, like many businesses, it was a it would have been a very difficult time to um transition quickly and we were lucky to be able to do that. Mm. Um just So if you found Sorry, Heidi, just to interject there a little bit. I'm kind of curious about this. So uh and we'll come back to uh the challenging uh, the paradigms of Western business because I still I do want to get into that. But <laughs> let me just take a little sidestep here. So you have this space where you deliver education training around entrepreneurship and leadership. Mm. COVID hits, that goes online. And the whole world is happy to do training online at that point, right? Have you Mm. found coming out of COVID now, there's still the demand for what you do without that um, commercial space? Or is is the default thinking falling back into place, which says, yes, your training's good, but it'll be much more valuable if you delivered it in this space over here. I'm kind of curious to where the market's at for you right now. Yeah, well, beautifully, no. So we were really lucky because our brand was strong. I mean, we had a beautiful space here in Dunedin, um, which is a sister city to Edinburgh. Um, but it was, you know, we're in an old um, an old building that had been completely redeveloped. It was an old wall stall back in its time. Um, and it was beautiful. But I think what we realized is that the bricks and mortar wasn't actually what the products and service was about. It was a nice place to gather and to mm. resource stuff, but it, it, it didn't it didn't have the impact um, on what we were actually training on. It was a nice place. It was a beautiful place to be. But what we realized is coming off the back of COVID and, and when the restrictions were lifted, um, <clears throat> we were able to deliver anywhere. And I think there was a lot more, um, how do you say, we were, it was more liberating to be able to say, hey, we can take this all around the world. So really what it came down to, it was us being able to move versus people needing to come to a specific place. Yeah. It was more around um, the um, the impact of the program and the, you know, the programs that we were writing and then being able to deliver that had the biggest amount of impact. That didn't actually matter where we delivered them in the end, which was a, mm. was a really in, you know, enlightening sort of experience. I'd put a lot of, I guess, kudos on the the space that we'd created because it was awesome. But I remember someone saying to me one day, it's not about the space, it's about you. Mm. So I was like, so it was, yeah, so we were very, we were very lucky to have, I guess, that power behind our brand and our reputation. And, and now we have the luxury of, we just, we just keep moving forward. So um, I guess in true Māori style, which is probably going to lead into the segue into what you're asking about is, <clears throat> you know, we went from what we call a marae, so the, when we set up the um, Innovate HQ, I'm not sure how you how familiar you are with marae, which is the meeting place for tribes, mm-hmm. traditional yeah, meeting yeah. place for tribes. Yeah. Yep. So it's obviously, it's a it's a fixed location. And I guess what, what it meant for us is um, when we transitioned out from COVID, it was we'd gone from being in a, in a marae into being in a waka, like a canoe. So it was, mm-hmm. you know, moving. We were starting to move and, and take our products and services and, um, you know, move with that instead. So the, mm. the metaphor for it was actually really quite beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to touch on, I guess, you know, looking at the, the, the Western way in which businesses run and how, I guess, holistically, um, you know, I think – for for me is that the beauty that, that culture brings into an organization is I guess how we, we're a little bit more spiritually centric. So mm-hmm. we're not just looking at things where, and I think from a Maori culture perspective, a lot of our rituals and protocols um, and our traditions are so powerful in this very fast, you know, moving, um, very, um, 
roll call. In many cases, very superficial environment sometimes because, Mm -hmm. you know, businesses go into survival mode, right? So uh, versus that authenticity of relationships and engagements can be lost when we're under pressure. And I think what having a cultural lens on business for us almost grounds us back again to having, you know, I guess looking at, I mean, I've, you know, I'm a sales manager by trade. And so, you know, people always saying, you know, how do I become a good salesperson? And I said, well, start with a hello. You know, start with those basic and you know engagements of, hey, how you going? You know, what's your day like? And it's creating those sort of basic um, intros just to begin. And and in, in Maori culture, we call it sakafanongitanga, which is basically around you know wonderful, um, powerful relationships and significant relationships. So we're not just we're not going in with a car dealer attitude. We're in here to create a long term relationship. Yes. So a lot of how. Um, you know, Maori culture influences how we do stuff in our businesses. There's a, a lot more sort of depth around how we consider what we're doing in our business and how our rituals and our customs have actually correlated into how we're doing everyday business, which has been really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it's created a lot more, so, um, you know, these powerful foundations behind how we do stuff. And it's more, again, it's more authentic to how we live mm. life as founders and business owners. So, yeah. So have you found then, um, Heidi, that people, if they don't understand that, do they find it hard to connect with that? Because if you're, you know, you're using words like depth and um, being more spiritual and bringing your Maori culture into the business and the way it works. If I come in from outside that, or if I'm, you know, we get talking and I'm, I'm outside that, um, have you found that people have, have struggled to connect with it or has that not really been a problem? No, in fact, they've embraced it because mm. what they've realized that we've become so materialistic and so disconnected from our I guess ourselves that we've lost our way and we've been faking it till we've made it for all these years and we're <laughs> relying on we're relying on all of these antiquated and outdated ways in which we're doing stuff and a lot of how Western business has been done isn't really um, what I'll call um, there hasn't been a lot of integrity shown it's basically you know first past the post it's yeah. everyone's competing with each other. And sometimes it's a bit of a dog eat dog thing. And where I am competitive, I, I am, I'm, I'm not cannibalistic. So it's like that whole thing of, um, I think what it does is it, it, it grounds us again. And so what we've actually found is, especially in New Zealand, um, as well, and, and, and Māori now around the world are having huge influence around how we're running businesses. And in actual fact, um, Wahinepreneurs or um, Maori um, leaders, business leaders, are, are now at the forefront um, globally of, um, I guess, being or championing uh, indigenous businesses because of the way in which I guess we see the world. It's a little bit different, yeah. but we're able to bring, um, yeah, we're able to bring a little bit more grace into, I guess, how. Um, how things have sort of been done because it's been bloody hard. Yeah, it's been it's been hard over. <laughs> yeah, very patriarchal. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we can get into that a little. I mean, because you, I mean, you're both from. I mean, uh, you know, you're uh, Wahini, so you're a woman, and you're indigenous. So, I, I, I'm guessing to be an entrepreneur in that kind of environment. And I, it, 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 you understand it's a total guess, Heidi, because I live on the other side of the world. So I've not seen it in, in New Zealand. I only can see what I see here in the UK. Um, has, has that meant that by default, you've had to work harder to prove yourself or to, you know, to establish the business, do you think? Uh, on reflection, yeah. Yeah, I have. I mean, I wouldn't have thought so years ago, but I think now, you know, when I work through a lot, I mean, we, we now, to give an example of, um, I guess, the population that I represent, I represent 3% of the population here in New Zealand for Māori women in the technology sector. So right. what that's meant now is because there's high demand for us to, as we build our, our economy over here, they want to see more female Māori people in tech. So I guess um, I get called on a lot to represent a lot of um, technology events and stuff because they want to see, I guess, more role models 
um, within that as well, which has been really cool. Um, I think, look, I grew up in a in a family full of men, and I love working with men. So I've never been challenged with working yeah. with a whole heap of guys. Uh, in fact, I love it. I think there's a there's a great balance there when you've got a. I mean, I'm lucky that I had. I've got wonderful brothers who are very supportive, and I I advocate that a lot because when um, I've always been supported um, by my brothers with everything that I do. I know that it's not the case in every family or even every organisation, but there's something that brings out a bit of a mongrel instinct with me when I'm working <laughs> with men because I actually I do fight a little bit harder, you know. It's just like yeah. there's something in the fight yeah. that makes me a little bit more deliberate. So, um, but you know, in, in many cases, I think you know, thinking about it, um, I think for you know, for Māori, it has been a little bit more challenging for us. But to be honest, I think that's made me want to work harder. So I guess, mm. you know, prove that we can get it done and, you know, with the right mindset, we can we can forge new pathways and new, I guess, um, uh, belief systems for, mm. you know, other, others out there. So, yeah, I'm sort of, the harder it is, the better I work, if that makes sense. <laughs> so it's almost depleting what you're saying, but. I like a bit of a struggle. Have you, you yeah, know, yeah. see chaos and I'll thrive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it, right? It's that kind of motto, isn't Correct. it? Like we're, we're just going to crack on and do it. So do you think then, looking back over some of the stuff that you've done and the, this desire to, to bridge Maori culture, business culture, yourself, you know, and that heritage, do, you, do you, looking back over it, do you see change has happened, or is it still as hard now oh. as it ever was? Oh no, it's been a beautiful transition. And I, when we spoke about it on the pre call as well, I mean, it has been you know challenging over the years with you know various things like it is in a lot of countries around the world. But I think you know now we're in New Zealand's in a beautiful place where for you know um, Maoris that are coming through, and we're all blended now, so we're mm. all looking like. You know, we've 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 got this wonderful ability to connect into you know being Maori or being Scottish. You know, I'm a Highlander, and then being Irish <laughs> as well. So being able to bring these beautiful blends in together because we all actually share mm. similar um, stories, believe it or not. So it's not just Indigenous. You know, the Scottish and the Irish have had their own challenges over the years as well. So it's one of those things being able to, um, um, I guess, celebrate celebrate mm. that blend. But I think, um, you know, New Zealand has come a long way. Um, there's a lot more opportunity um, for, uh, you know, um, Māori to do, to do even better. And I think the more that's, that's wrapped around and we've got a lot more encouragement out there, the better it is. So I think, yeah, it's mm. a, good, a great time. It's a great time to be able to, um, I guess, embrace our culture and use it in a mm. In a, in a beautiful, authentic way to do some really cool stuff around the world. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I, I love how Maori culture has been promoted. It feels like to me that it's been promoted a lot more recently. And, you know, the first time mm. I came across it really was when I saw the All Blacks on television. Um, you know, just doing the, uh, what do you, the hi, hi, Haiku? Okay. Hacker. 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 The hacker, that's it. Um, and just blowing my mind, uh, <laughs> you know. And even, like, for my daughter, you know, movies like Moana and, and, and stuff like that just coming out, you just kind of go, this is, this is cool. And I've been to New Zealand many times, uh, and I just love that whole Maori feel of things, you know. And I, and I try very hard to pronounce the words, I'm useless at, <laughs> I just need to get better. Um, so... Yeah, okay. Heidi, you listen, you you you've mentioned this word spiritual quite a few times. You're a spiritual person, mm. you're trying to bring the spiritual dimension to your business. It's part of your mm. culture, it's part of your heritage, perhaps more your Maori heritage than maybe your Scottish. I don't know. maybe the Scots would say that's slightly unfair. Um, but how what does that mean? Like how do you fill your tank? How do you how do you sort of recharge your batteries? What does that look like? Yeah, well, I'm so, so I'm thinking about some, you know, when I'm doing uh, e anything. I mean, I've know what it's like to work your ass off and totally neglect everything about your well-being. So I think what I've learned through trial and error, 
um, and failures <laughs> <laughs> is that you've got to really counterbalance when, I mean, I'm what, you know, I guess I'm a high performer, so I'm always going, I've got a mm. Ferrari mind, which is why we've called the business Innovate HQ. The mind never slows down. Um, but I think what I try to make, um, a greater effort on, especially now is being able to just be still and, yeah. and actually, um, and also enjoy being outside. So I love being out in nature. I love going for walks. Um, again, anything to reconnect with, you know, with nature is really important for yeah. me. Um, I also love dancing, so I'm a bit of a boogie. Okay. Tech, so I like to go out and, you know, it's not necessarily winding down. That's probably more of a blowout. So it's like, a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to exert. Um, but I'll also, ironically, I actually love listening to podcasts. So I actually go to sleep now listening to podcasts. Oh, so wow. it's actually been, yeah, yeah. So it's quite cool. So I actually love, um, I love getting into the zone of listening to other people's yeah. stories. And you never know what story is going to influence you next. So, um, yeah. And time with family and friends is another thing as well. So it's that, but being able to have a good balance because I could work my ass off to be completely honest with you and I've mm. enjoyed it, but I also love having time with my partner and my family and my friends. So it's, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because everybody that I've talked to on this podcast, every entrepreneur, um, I would I would say that there's always this tension. I mean, we call it the work-life balance. There's always this tension between work and what we perceive to be life, right? So um, the desire to spend time with families. A lot of people like you like to get out in the hills, go and be in nature. Um, I imagine most people like to dance, but they probably they I don't know how well they would admit it uh, if I'm honest with you. Um, <laughs> but they, but they, you know, they, they, I think there's there's definitely some common threads that I that I see in that answer. But the bottom line is, um, for me, I find that it's easy for work to be the dominant force in my mm-hmm. diary, and just recognizing that and acknowledging actually I need to be intentional if I'm going to do any of these other things um, is perhaps the most powerful thing, isn't it really? Um, mm. So where do you, where do you see more? Uh, what does, what does the future look like for you? Well, to be honest, what I'd love to be doing, I mean, I love working on different projects. So we do at the moment, um, what we do is we work a lot with youth. So as you know, um, coming off the back of COVID, we've got lots of challenges globally with youth no longer being engaged in education. So mm. we're dealing with two of the issues. We're, we're looking at ways in which we can um, get youth more engaged and more motivated about what they're going to do because we're in a different new phase in life now and we don't know yeah. what sort of are sort of coming up. So doing a lot of work around the country with that, but I also sit um, – I also sit on the the panel um, for NZQA, which is New Zealand Qualifications Authority for Tertiary, so influencing Māori and education. And then I'm just about to jump on uh, looking after regional economic um, strategy for the region here as well. But beyond that, um, I love, ironically, um, I love doing um, keynotes and public speaking. Mm. So I do a lot of public speaking. And so to be able to travel the world um, I guess, you know, sharing stories um, and I guess sharing experiences has been, mm. uh, I, I love doing that. And so I, I see myself, you know, traveling a lot more um, over the years to come, but also being able to go work and, um, and doing some, you know, humanitarian work too. So I've got a keen interest in going into communities, uh, indigenous communities around the world and doing some cool mm. stuff, and just, you know, giving a hand and, yeah, supporting them. Mm. Oh, that sounds fantastic. That sounds fantastic. I mean, you've mentioned a couple of times um, youth and you work with youth. And uh, I, I, too, have the privilege of working with um, uh, amazing young people. And I'm kind of curious, Heidi, if you, if you think about all the young people that you've worked with and you can spot like some golden threads that you think, if I could just pull that one there, that's going to have a massive impact on our young generation. What would it be? I think it's their humility, and I guess mm. you know we were just talking about this tonight because I've been I've been uh, we've tra- we're down in another uh, region. I've just travelled back from another region tonight. We just launched one of our programs down there, and one of the f- things I find really incredible about this generation, 
and like our generation was when we ask them what they want to do, it's all around um, people and planet. Mm. So, you know, years ago when we were at school, it'd be, oh, I'm going to be a doctor, accountant, lawyer, or nurse. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like, oh, no, I want to help. I want to help humanity and I want to do this. If it's not, you know, relating to the rainbow community, it's it's dealing with cultures, it's dealing with, um, you know, mental health and all that sort of stuff. So I think, you know, um, yeah, that's that's for me has been one thing that's really stood out with the with the youth that we're dealing with is their keen interest in helping mm. each other. Yeah. So um, and and helping yeah. the world. Yeah, much more so now than like you say than the, I mean what, what we're in Generation Z now, aren't we, or Gen Z? Um, much more so now uh, than say the millennials or the Gen Xers that came before those. Yeah, definitely. That's interesting. Well, we will watch this space, as they say. So, right. Heidi, we've now got to that point of the show, which you're either going to love or hate. And I don't know which one it's going to be. Um, <laughs> it's called the question box. And so uh, this is where I have a, a box full of random questions. I'm going to pull the questions out of the box. I'm going to flick through <laughs> said questions. And wherever you tell me to stop, that's a question that we're going to ask and see where it takes us. OK, so let's go. Stop. Stop there. OK. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready for this question? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, bring okay. it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a really nice question. Okay, <laughs> I want you to describe a simple pleasure. Oh, God. Uh, um, can I just say what it is? Because it's quite, I love it. It's going to yeah, sound yeah. a bit cosy. Yeah, I, I like a back tickle. A back tickle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think everyone's going, <laughs> I, I think I probably agree, but you probably should explain that just a little bit more, Heidi. <laughs> uh, you know, simple pleasure is, um, yeah, I love, I mean, I guess I, when I, I, I do, I do love massage and therapeutic massage. So um, that would be a simple pleasure. Well, I think it's a simple pleasure. Um, but yeah. The odd, you know, back tickle when you've had a stressful day is quite nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> I maybe would have said back massage. That's a very simple um, uh, pleasure. Uh, but uh, or I was, I, if I was honest with you, I was kind of half expecting you to say, because I think this is probably what most of the known world would have said at that point is some chocolate. Um, but <laughs> Oh, right. Chocolate's there no. too. I didn't know. It is it no. is eleven thirty at night over here, so that's probably where my head's is. That's probably where my head's is. It's like you, you know that whole yeah, lullaby yeah. moment with that lullaby zone. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, Heidi, I think your your answer is much, much better than chocolate. I think chocolate would have been way too boring. Um, but one of life's simple pleasures is that. i tell you one of the things that I like to do, and it is a really simple pleasure, but it's taken me years to do it, right, is um, I used to live in North Carolina, uh, in mm. the United States, right? And I lived there for a few years and had the most wonderful time. And one of the things that I acutely remember from this trip uh, from this time was on the porch i was like 18 19 that sort of age when i lived there on the porch of the house of all the houses was usually a swing so they had this sort of covered area and a swing so regardless of the weather you could sit outside and just sit in this swing and either think contemplate journal pray read a book it didn't really matter but it was just you were in this very tranquil state and I, I can't think of a better expression so finally last year um i've just built myself a, a new wood shop because i do like to do a little bit of woodwork um and i finally made some i call them carolina swings so at our house now we have carolina swings so every morning my thing is i get myself a cup of tea and i just sit in the swing and i read or i journal or i pray or do something for like 10, 15 minutes. Normally my wife and I catch up, just catch up, just have a little conversation in the swing. And that's my simple pleasure, the Carolina swing in a covered area, outdoors every day, regardless of the weather. Very nice. Oh, I'd have to support that as well. I, I love actually swings myself. So anything hammock or anything else like that, I would totally agree with that as well. 
Oh, hammock, now you're talking my daughter's language. <laughs> as <laughs> soon as the sun's out the hammock's out and she's in it and she's just quite happy um happy yeah just just wonderful place for her to be so no it's great anyway simple pleasure i feel like we could just keep going and going and going <laughs> <laughs> i'll be a bit more cautious on my next you know my next answer anyway no 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 i the back to cool <laughs> thing is when you said to me can i say it i'm like what's she gonna say i'm like yeah yeah i'm like keep it as long as it's pg we can say what we like and i think the back tickles yeah, yeah. good <laughs> 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 Heidi, that's awesome listen uh i'm sure there's many folks out there listening who would uh like to get in touch connect with you um find out more about what you guys are doing at innovate uh hq what you're doing in new zealand and around the world with your training um and even your love of all things Indigenous. So how do people reach you? How do they connect with you if they want to do that? Yeah, sure. Well, they can go to InnovateHQ.com or you can go to InnovateHQ on any social media, Facebook, um, Instagram, and I'm on LinkedIn as well. If you want to check me out, Heidi Renata, happy to connect. Yeah, absolutely. Check out Heidi's. And it's InnovateHQ. That's I-N-N-O-V, the number eight, eight H q.com <laughs> so just take just take ate out of innovate put in the number eight and you've got it right innovate hq.com uh we will of course link to uh heidi's uh company website social media profiles and linkedin profile in the show notes which you can get for free along with the transcript at push to be more.com uh, or it will come direct to your inbox if you're signed up for the newsletter heidi listen I feel like I'm just getting warmed up in this conversation. I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And it seems like a shame to stop it. But uh, unfortunately, time is against us. Thank you so much um, for joining us and uh, just sharing everything from Julie Andrews to Back Tickles and to a lot of the Maori culture in between. It's been awesome. Oh, that's awesome. No, thank you so much for having me. It's been great to chat. And yeah, I've just got started. I've got to go to bed now. So interesting, eh? But um, <laughs> as we... <laughs> <laughs> but as we say in, in Māori, I want to finish off with uh, um, with Pomari, which Pomari is good evening. So it's, you know, we wish you well on the, on, well, you're, well, you actually, I should be saying Atamari to you, which is good morning. Um, but good morning. from my side to you, it's a, it's a good evening from me. So, you know, thanks, thanks for, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been great. What was that, Pomari? Pomari. So if you, if you Pomari. think of... And if you want a little hint around Māori language, it's the, the vowels, instead of A-E-I-O-U, it's A-E-E or U, and that will help with <laughs> okay. pronunciation. I'm going to go away and have a look at this now. <laughs> I'll get better, Heidi. I will get better. No doubt about it. You're all great. You've done well. You've done well. I need to improve. No, it's great. Listen, thank you again for joining us. What a great conversation. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Also, a big shout out to today's show sponsor, Orion Media. If you are wondering if podcasting is a good marketing strategy for your business, which I probably think it is, if you host a podcast, you meet some incredible people, just like we did with Heidi. Uh, do connect with them at orionmedia.com. That's A U R I O N media.com. And of course, they will be linked on the pushtobemore.com website as well. Well, now be sure to follow Push To Be More wherever you get your podcast from because we've got yet more great conversations lined up and I don't want you to miss any of them. And in case no one has told you yet today, uh, you are awesome. Yes, you are. Created awesome. It's just a burden you've got to bear. Heidi has to bear it. I have to bear it. You've got to bear it as well. Now, Push To Be More is produced by Orion Media. You can find our entire archive of episodes on your favorite podcast app. The team that makes this show possible is Sadaf Bainon, Estella Robin, and Tanya Hutzelak. Our theme song was written by Josh Edmondson. And as I mentioned, you can read the transcript and show notes on our website, pushtobemore.com. So that's it from me. That's it from Heidi. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic week wherever you are in the world. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.